Hi guys, this is Scribbly again with another pen review. And today, as always, we have something fairly interesting. Uh, today, something a little bit out of the ordinary because today we review a Lamy ballpoint pen. And I write personally mostly either with pencils or with fountain pens. So it's not so often that I do use and also review ballpoint pens. But of course, ballpoint pens are part of the stationary universe. So as a stationary reviewer, you do review the occasional ballpoint pen here and there. And the Lamy Pico, which is the one that we're going to review here today, is also a quite cool little pocket pen. And, uh, you know, pocket pens, they are easy to transport. And it's not always that you can practically use uh, or write with a fountain pen when you're out and about. This pen has been sent to me uh, by Fontoplumo, fontoplumo.nl, the web address for the web shop. Uh, go check them out. Uh, thanks very, very much. Fontoplumo supports Scrively since a couple of years. So I appreciate the continued support in order to be able to bring all these fantastic reviews to the folks out there. Let's now look at the Lamy Pico, which comes in this super cool little packaging. I actually really, really like the way how this is presented. I like all of Lamy's packaging, um, the style, the design. I just love the, the industrial look of it. C. Josef Lamy GmbH in Heidelberg. The pen costs 34 euro, which is not absolutely inexpensive, but it's also far from being ridiculously expensive. I think this is a fair price. Is this as set a pocket pen? And then you do see here how this works in principle. So it's like a smaller pen when it's non-extended, so to speak. And then when you press that mechanism, the pen extends to a full length pen, which I of course do show you in a minute live. And then it comes with the Lamy M22 refill. So it's not a D1 refill in there. They're these small standard size refills that are pretty thin as well. But it is like one of these like large room or large capacity Lamy M22 refills, which of course makes it a proprietary refill. But you then in turn get a little bit more capacity, which is also not too shabby. Super cool packaging here, as said, very minimalist. I just like really dig that design. But what's important, of course, is that little pen. As you can see, the pen almost disappears in my not very tiny hands, but they're also not ridiculously large. The shape, I would say, is somewhat of like a pill form, a pill shape or something like that. This pen here happens to be the glossy white or I think piano white is called, but it comes in all kinds of other cool colors, such as like electric orange. It comes in black. I think it also comes in a few of these Lamy Lux editions, like those type of colors. It comes in a wide range of colors, makes them perhaps also like a nice little collectible, if that's the kind of stuff that you're into. But as said, like very, very lovely little pen. Yeah. And I mean, like this is just like, you know, the barrel, which is like cylindric with these rounded off edges, pill shaped as said. That's what that looks like. As you see here in my camera ring light thingy, fairly reflective. You then like have the Lamy logo here that, of course, acts as a roll stop when you have the pen on your desk, which of course is fairly handy. Roll stop looks a little bit like, you know, the roll stop that you know from the dialogue, just that on the dialogue pen, the uh, the logo is like indented or recessed or whatever you want to call it. And then on the uh, Pico, because of course the pen is a smaller pen, the roll stop is a smaller roll stop and it is uh, kind of like a relief. So it's exposed, not uh, not not recessed in that sense. Um, you have like a little gray ring here, which is also where the pen comes apart in order to refill it. Show you that in a little bit. And then you have the ballpoint tip sitting in here. That's basically how that works. Uh, if you then want to write with the pen, you press it in here. And then out comes this tip with this like ribbed design. Uh, it's like a plastic pipe, um, which looks really cool. And when you release it, the pen extends some plastic ribbing here. I just really love the design. You have the ribbing here. You have the ribbing here. Like, so it mirrors each uh, one another, like design wise. I think it looks pretty, pretty cool. 
Uh, little caveat, of course, is that like the Lamy logo, again, only can be read when you're a right-handed writer. If you're a left-handed writer, like I happen um, to be, then you will have the Lamy logo flipped upside down. Of course, not a deal breaker, something that you can live with. But as you can see, and of course, I just done it like with two hands right now in order to show you how that mechanism works. But of course, you know, you can easily comfortably do that with one hand, no problem at all. Also a little bit of a fidgety thing, to be honest, like it's a nice toy to play with. But as said, you know, it's like a very small pen, but then uh, when you fully extend it, uh, it becomes a very nice sized, comfortably sized pen. Let's do a quick size comparison just so that you see what's the ballpark range in which this pen plays size-wise. This is a Lamy logo uh, that I have here right beside it. So you see it's considerably smaller than the Lamy logo. Um, and when extended to full size, it's basically almost the size of a Lamy logo. You know, like this is not an exact science, but like I think this should give you the confidence or the impression or the image, the depiction of this actually being a full sized pen. Unfortunately, I don't have a Caveco Sport around right now. Otherwise, I would like to do a comparison to the Caveco Sport, which might be helpful. But I think, you know, you get the idea. This is like a full sized pen. Uh, of course, it doesn't have a clip. Um, and I'm not sure if there's clips that you can buy to put on. I don't think so. Um, what you can get for this pen, and I got that as well to show you for uh, 10 euro, 9 euro 50, uh, something like that. You can get like a little leather pouch, which is kind of cool, where you can then put the pen in and then you can carry the pen. That's how I carry that pen because I wouldn't want to have it in my pocket just like that. Um, I would be worried that there's like dust and whatever stuff getting in here, uh, clogging, not really clogging it up, but you know, just, um, yeah, you have dirt in there uh, when you have it in your pocket or your backpack. So I just carry the pen most of the time in my inner pocket or in my jeans pocket or shirt pocket, just like that. And uh, it's pretty easy to then get the pen out like that and, you know, get it back in. So that's like really cool, very, very fun. Refill, open the pen here, and then you have this uh, Lamy M22 refill sitting right in here. This is like a medium one that comes likely then also in fine and broad. I don't know, check that up. Um, the medium one writes, okay, -ish. these proprietary Lamy refills, I'm not a great fan of them. There's a lot of ballpoint refills that technically write better, but does it write completely awful? No, not at all. It will definitely get the writing job done and you're also stuck with it because it's a proprietary refill. So that is what it is. There's one little thing that I observed on this pen and I wanted to point it out to you. It irritates me just a little bit. It's not a deal breaker, but uh, right here in front this thing here does have a little play it wiggles around a little bit it has nothing to do with the refill thingy side of things because uh, if I hold on to this right here I get that little play as well so I think it just simply has to do with the fact how this cap here sits on that mechanism. Perhaps it has to do with the extension of that inner mechanism or something like that. I am not 100% sure why that is. It's not a deal breaker, but sometimes when you write with the pen and you hold on to it here in front instead of here, you do feel that a little bit, but you actually really have to pay attention to it. Uh, I'm a person that pays attention to details. I just noticed it. Hence, I wanted to point it out so that nobody says like, hey, Scribbly, why have you done a review? And uh, you haven't pointed that out. I bought the pen and like now I noticed that. I told you, now you know. Let's do a quick writing sample. Nothing spectacular. I said nothing to show you. It's not a fountain pen, so I can't show you line width and line variation and all of that because it is simply a ball point pen, but it writes. Lamy Pico. Ballpoint pen. It does the job. If you're sitting on a subway and you're reading a book and you want to, you know, 
mark something, underline something. If you're out and about with your pocket notebook and uh, you do want to take a quick few notes and you don't want to carry a ballpoint pen or you just want to have like a little nice stylish pen, then maybe the Lamy Pico with this little nice Lamy uh, pouch for under 50 euro, um, 10 euro plus 30 something euro, like sets you back 45 euro or so for this nice little writing total package. I think it's like a fair one, it's a good one. Friends, that's been it with this review. Thanks again a lot to Fontoplumo in the Netherlands. Check them out, fontoplumo.nl for shipping this little one for review. And I'll see all of you at the next review. Ciao, ciao.